Hi guys. It's another hot, sticky summer day in May. And the collapse of global industrial civilization and the, uh, in the great state of Texas, where I hope I'm getting the hell out of here in one week from tomorrow morning, if I can uh, ever get my trailer out of Hawk, I will find out in a couple of hours how screwed I am on this little trailer, so wish me luck. But anyway, while I'm waiting to hear whether I will be getting out of the great state of Texas, uh, over here on the mainstream media here on Monday morning, May 2nd, 2022. And I noticed that uh, oilprice.com showing up on the mainstream media. And I just have spaced out doing an oilprice.com uh, rant for a couple of weeks. I seem to have uh, forgotten to do that as I guess the price of gas I'm hearing starting to creep back up as I get ready to uh, probably spend $800 on uh, gas getting uh, back to New York, baby. But anyway, uh, I like this short and sweet uh, little note from oilprice.com. Hmm, who would have ever thought fossil fuels are not going away anytime soon. Now, of course, understand that oilprice.com is a uh, website for oil and gas investors. Uh, and so, of course, uh, oilprice.com wants their readers to believe that fossil fuels are not going away anytime soon. And uh, it, there's this one problem for people who thinking that fossil fuels are going away anytime soon, and that's that the oil investors are right. Uh, so what is on the minds of the oil investors on Monday morning in 2022? Calls for the end of all investments in new oil and gas production. Protests demanding the immediate suspension of oil production and denunciatory reports from environmental NGOs slamming banks for still financing fossil fuels have become fixtures of today's life in the West but fossil fuels are going nowhere, at least in the observable future. This is uh, Bill Winters, chief executive of Standards Chartered, whatever that means. Quote, the idea that we can turn off the taps and end fossil fuels tomorrow, it is obviously ridiculous and naive. First of all, it's not going to happen. And secondly, it would be very disruptive." Close quote. The reason why this is not going to happen should be obvious and can be gleaned from a quick look at any oil price chart. The world's demand for oil is currently greater than the supply available, hence prices are high. What followed the loss of just one relatively tiny portion of global supply with the anti-Russian sanctions should suggest what would happen if all oil production were to stop. Yet the pressures on the oil industry remains and intensifies. Two years ago, the International Energy Agency said investment in new oil and gas exploration should be abolished by the end of 2020 because we would not need more oil 
and gas going forward. And now the Secretary General of the United Nations is calling oil producing countries, quote, dangerous radicals for increasing fossil fuel production. The IEA, for its part, has turned around on its calls for fewer oil and gas investments. In just a matter of months, the industry body has reversed its message. It is now calling on oil producers to churn out more oil and gas. <coughs> How long <coughs> will it be until the UN's Antonio Guterres <coughs> joins these calls for more oil and gas because prices have become unbearable. Meanwhile, demand for oil remains robust despite environmentalist protest, despite denunciatory reports, and despite calls for less investment in oil and gas. In its March oil market report, the IEA said that 2022's oil demand would rise by 2.1 million barrels per day from last year. This, for context, is about the same as the combined oil production of Nigeria and Venezuela as of March this year. Yet, oil demand is not static, so this month, well, meaning in April, the International Energy Agency revised downward its demand forecast from 2.1 million barrels per day to 1.9 billion, 1.9 million barrels per day from this time last year. That is about the same as the combined production of Libya and Algeria. OPEC also revised down its demand forecast, although OPEC still expects stronger demand growth in the I. EA at 3.7 million barrels per day. The reason for the revisions is not action by climate NGOs and the European government switching from oil to renewables. On the contrary, the reason for the, you know, these upward revisions for oil demand has nothing to do with climate-related issues at all. Instead, it has to do with inflation projections. Crude oil demand is quite an inelastic sort of demand. What this means is that oil demand is rather stable even when prices increase or decrease. The reason for this inelasticity is the global economy's dependence on oil, a dependence that so many organizations and governments have tried to challenge for years with limited success. The longevity of oil demand is also supported by the emerging debate about making the energy transition a just one, a concept that was out of the spotlight while students protested across Europe for urgent action on climate change. The idea of the just transition has finally begun to draw attention. The idea as described by Greenpeace is, quote, moving to a more sustainable economy in a way that is fair to everyone, including people working in polluting industries, close quote. This is Greenpeace defending 
people working in polluting industries. Indeed, proponents of the just transition focus on the most important aspect of the shift to less fossil fuel use from an individual's perspective, that no one suffers adverse consequences of this shift. Yet, besides, quote, people working in polluting industries, the idea of a just transition also concerns whole nations in the developing world. Unlike climate change proponents in the so-called first world, these nations have not had the chance to reap all the economic and social benefits of oil-based economies that, according to many, became industrialized and even post-industrialized precisely because of their, I love this term, generous use of fossil fuels. The developed world, just transition advocates argue, has no right to deny the developing world these benefits has no right to deny the developing world these benefits simply because it has reached a level where it has sufficient economic comfort to address issues such as the human activity effects on the environment. It is this, uh, it is this idea of a just transition that will help ensure the future of fossil fuels for quite some time. For all, the promotion of renewable energy as cheaper than fossil fuels, the fact is big, rich economies have the most capacity while poorer nations lag considerably even in the EU. Oil however, is everywhere, even in the poorest of the poor countries, and it will stay there for decades. Yep, 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 and if you enjoyed that story, how about American oil, oil refiners set for a blowout year? Yep, yep, yep. Soaring fuel prices have been a boon for U.S. refiners this year. Growing demand and tightening supply are helping push refining margins even higher. American refiners are likely to continue seeing higher profits as Europe's energy crisis worsens. Yep, yep, yep. A rally in fuel prices that has mirrored the strong performance of crude since the start of the year is set to push U.S. refiners profits this year as demand continues to outpace supply. Yep, yep, yep. And there you go. And I'm quite sure this is a picture from the great state of Texas. Anyway, uh, I'm going to be a good little fossil fuel slave and go pay my, well, Yesterday it was three dollars and sixty nine cents a gallon. Uh, today it's probably three seventy nine a gallon. Getting ready to spend about eight hundred dollars. Heading back to New York, baby. Assuming I have a trailer to pull back to New York. Anyway, get out there and enjoy being a good little fossil fuel slave. Well, you still can. Bye, guys.